with slightly more than one tenth of the population of the United States, Poland may be bound to take over as the most powerful economy in the world. When there is violence in America, Poland has maintained peace within its borders. When there is unemployment in the United States, Poland has provided jobs to their people. When the US struggles with illegal migration, Poland has maintained strict control over its borders. It's all these crimes coming over from illegal migrants. Or get used to it because you're going to lose again. And when the US headed towards economic collapse, Poland has been one of the fastest growing economies in the EU, experiencing uninterrupted growth over three decades, the longest in European history. However, there was a time when Poland was considered one of the poorest countries in the world. The unforgettable impact of World War II, the subsequent betrayal by Soviet leader Joseph Stalin, and the 1980s inflation rate of more than 100% forced millions of Polish people to permanently migrate to other nations. Nevertheless, since the collapse of the communist regime, Poland's GDP in the last 30 years has increased by 826%, a record that is soon going to overtake the sixth largest economy in the world. Even during the 2008 financial crisis, Poland was the only country in the European Union that did not let recession enter its borders. And today, it's being considered the next export powerhouse of all of Europe. So how did Poland manage to overcome some of the biggest challenges in the world? And how is it secretly heading towards becoming the largest economy? It's against our culture. And the culture is very important. As I told you, we are a Christian country. We don't want hijra in Poland. We don't want Poland being taken over by Muslims, Buddhists, or someone else. For us, Christianity as identity, as, a, as our DNA, is very important. And our government has the right to say no. When we talk about Poland's economy, the power of culture and unity seems to take the lead. For example, after top government officials died in a plane crash in 2010, tens of thousands of Poles covered the presidential palace with flowers, wreaths, and candles, something rarely witnessed in other countries. The same unity can be seen in their economic structure, which is dominated by the service sector. Surprisingly, the service sector alone contributes approximately 63% to their GDP. As for the rest, industries like machine building, food processing, shipbuilding, mining coal, iron and steel contribute more than 36% to their economy. But why would Poland focus the majority of their efforts on just a few industries? You see, it's through these sectors that Poland now stands against the world's largest economies, surpassing strong countries like Sweden, Norway and the United Arab Emirates, and standing close to Switzerland. Nonetheless, behind this enormous transformation lie the painful lessons Poland learned after the Second World War. When the Red Army occupied the country, the Soviet government nationalized the industries to ensure Poland could not innovate as per their own will. Specifically speaking, they controlled private industries and seized land from landowners without making any payment in return. The situation became worse when the Soviet government denied the Polish government the right to reconstruction funds from Germany. As Germany caused heavy damage to their own economy during World War II, the Allies directed Germany to repair Poland as a form of punishment. You can estimate the damage caused to Warsaw in 1945, as Poland's capital, more than 80% of the city, was destroyed. However, as Soviets denied this right, it directed Poland to consider this decision as a sign of forgiveness and friendship with Germany. And when anyone tried to raise their voice or protest against the government, their elite military squad, ZOMO, was ready to suppress their voice. Nevertheless, Poland still made efforts to get its country back on track by taking massive loans from Western countries like the United States, Canada, and the UK. But with Soviet rule in the country, it was impossible to achieve their economic designs. As a result, Poland was sitting on a $23 billion debt by 1980. In 1981, the country even declared its insolvency to the Western European central banks. 
This image of people lining up for groceries is a sign of the conditions that existed during the time, with the most essential item in demand being toilet paper. Yet the Soviet Union failed to realize that imposing too much pressure on Poland's population could also backfire in the coming years. After experiencing painful periods for decades, Poland gave rise to a political force that would change its entire future. And that political force was called Solidarity. In 1989, an independent Polish trade union marked the end of communism and held their first partially free and democratic elections, with Lech Walesa becoming the first democratically elected president in decades. By 1990, the Polish people finally had a leader they could trust. Upon taking office, Walesa quickly transitioned Poland's economy into a free market economy, where decisions regarding investment, production, and distribution depend on the demand and supply of a product in the market. But no one knew that Poland would catch up with the world so quickly. Within a few years of holding their first free and democratic elections, Poland's economy began showing significant growth. And since then, it has never looked back. Meanwhile, the US economy has struggled massively in 2009 and 2020. One of the key reasons behind Poland's growth was the initiatives taken towards privatizing small and medium state-owned companies. The freedom to establish and run their own companies encouraged Polish people to increase their income levels. On top of that, in 1992, Poland founded an international free trade agreement with Hungary and the now Czech Republic and Slovakia. Now, the biggest benefit of this agreement was that trading in around 80% of industrial products was free of tariffs. Additionally, exports from Poland enjoyed duty-free treatment from EU members. This in turn pushed private businesses to explore opportunities in foreign markets and learn to adapt to the world economy. This timetable shows examples of goods that Poland imported from EU members during that time, such as cars, steel products, raw materials, etc. But did this agreement really support Poland? Well, by 1996, 70% of Poland's trade was with EU members, which also led to the rise of leading Polish companies. For example, bicycle manufacturing company Cross SA, furniture company Black Red White, bus and tram manufacturing company Solaris Bus and & Coach, and yacht manufacturing company Delphia Yachts. Despite trading with its neighbors, Poland soon realized it had greater potential to serve larger markets. In other words, there was a need for a bigger opportunity to help them grow on a larger scale. So in 2004, Poland joined the European Union. However, taking advantage of the EU market was not an easy job. Due to the larger scale of its market, Poland had to diversify its economy to adapt to millions of EU customers. Yet no one imagined that Poland would become one of the leading members of the Union. You see, instead of building their own companies from scratch, Poland focuses on exporting the ingredients that are used to make products. In consequence, this strategy ensures success even if there is less demand in the market. For example, Poland exports items such as insulated wire, video displays, rubber tires, plastic lids, iron structures, and vehicle parts worldwide. Furthermore, even the United States imports boilers, lighting signs, furniture, pearls, precious stones and arms and ammunition among many other products from Poland. But is it enough to beat the largest economy in the world? Well, as of today, exports of goods and services now make up 65% of Poland's GDP. Of the total exports, the largest trading partners include approximately 28% to Germany, 6% to Czech Republic, 6% to France, and 5% to the UK. Furthermore, approximately 88% of Poland's exports by value are delivered to other European nations. This transformation has also ranked Poland at number six in terms of foreign direct investment. So with professional citizens in the majority of sectors, running a business becomes a smoother process. Specifically, by 2019, Poland has attracted more than $236 billion in foreign direct investment. Moreover, in June 2023, 
Poland attracted the largest foreign direct investment in its history from Intel Corporation. The company has decided to invest $4.6 billion to establish one of the biggest semiconductor plants in Europe, creating more jobs and reducing the unemployment rate in the country. Surprisingly, 94% of investors are willing to reinvest in Poland. Not to mention the access to free public health care, education and childcare financed through the National Health Fund for its people. Thus, Poland has created the sixth largest economy in the European Union. So by keeping all these factors in mind, it seems acceptable that in the coming decades, Poland may well be standing face to face with the United States. But do you think it will surpass the largest economy in the world? Tell us in the comments section below. Don't forget to subscribe to our channel and press the like button if you enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching.